Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. So children, let us start with a lesson in standard 9. Subject is English. And this particular lesson has got something to do with art and to paintings, etc. And what is the name of the lesson? It is lesson number 3.2 from your English textbooks. And the name of the lesson is Reading Works of Art. Now, when we talk about art, children, we have been uh, learning art in school as a subject. And many of us have also developed different kinds of arts as a hobby. Some of the arts are arts which are performing arts. That is, some of us know how to dance, to sing. Okay. And some of them are art like connected to drawing, painting, sculpting, clay making, etc. So, art is anything which is creative. Alright. In which you produce something very different, very unique and something which is very, very appealing to people. But in this particular lesson, we are going to try to read the works of art. That is, art is not something like language, children. If there is a story written, you can read the words of the story and you can understand what the meaning of the story is. But if you look at a painting, if you look at a picture, then you will now have to look at the picture, observe the picture and try to understand what the painter or what the artist wants to tell you about that particular work of art. So reading work of art is also a kind of a skill you can say. Okay, It's a kind of a trick that we develop by uh, learning or by understanding certain, uh, reading certain observations or actually looking at works of art and trying to understand what they mean. So in this particular lesson, we are going to try to understand two different kinds of works of art. That is, we will look at a very famous artist called Sayyid Haider Raza and we will try to read some Gond artwork. Okay, that is a kind of a tribal form of a artwork. So we will learn more about this person called Sayyid Haider Raza who was also known as Raza popularly. He is a very very famous Indian artist and he had a very unique uh, style of children drawing. Now when we learn to draw in school, when we were in the first standard or second standard, when a teacher used to make us draw things. I remember I used to draw an apple or I used to draw two hills and a coconut palm and a small hut and the sun rising above the hills. But this very famous artist, Sayyid Haider Raza, he had, very he had a very different theme of painting. So he used to draw geometric shapes. Okay, He used to make use of vibrant colors, he used to make use of different combinations and compositions. So his paintings were very different from the other paintings that you can see around you. So certain artists, they will draw nature, they will draw people. But Sayyid Haider Raza, he had a kind of a geometrical inclination, you can say, or he was inclined or he was a little bit more interested in drawing about these artists, these shapes, the various geometrical shapes that we have. So we have been learning about geometrical shapes. That is, we know that there are circles, there are triangles, uh, rectangles, square, etc. So he used to make a combination, a unique combination of all these geometrical figures and produce a beautiful painting. And then we will talk also about the Gond art. Now the Gonds, they are a kind of a tribal people. Okay. And they are found in various uh, states in India. That is, they are found in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, some, some of the Gond people, you will find them living in Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, etc. So these, again, these tribal people, they have a very particular and unique style of painting. Okay, we will look at some of their work of art also. So if you have your uh, English textbooks with you, 
I will ask you to open your textbooks and come to page number 62. Now I will not be of course reading the entire textbook and explaining each word to you. I will be just giving you an overview of what is there in the textbook. So what will help you when you read from the textbook? It will help you to understand the lesson better. Alright. So now come on as we usually do. We look at certain exercises from our warming up part. So let us take the first exercise in our warming up part which has got to do with colors. So when we are talking about drawing, when we are talking about painting, colors are an integral part of drawing and painting. So let us look at this exercise which is connected to or related to colors. And of course it has got a connection to English language also. So we are supposed to complete the idioms using the appropriate color terms. So there are a number of idioms in English or phrases which we ordinarily use a lot which is based on colors which has got a mention of the various colors. So come on let us see uh, which are the idioms which use colors in them. So look at the first one. Give someone a dash look. So when you look angrily at someone or when you look at someone with a dislike or distrust then what do what which color do we use there to, uh, to uh, show someone that we are a little angry with them. So how will you phrase that idiom? So you will say give someone a black look. So when you give someone a black look doesn't mean you have put on black color on your face and then you are looking at the person. It means that you are looking at him with anger. So this is another way of saying that you are angry when you give someone a black look. Then you have the dash sheep of the family. That is a person who brings bad name or who brings disgrace to the family. Someone who must have got involved in some, some kind of crime or something like that. So what sheep do you call that person? You call him the black sheep of the family. So sheep are usually white in color, light, light in color. So the black color sheep stands out of the crowd. Isn't it? It is a thing which is not very usual, something out of the ordinary. So a black sheep is a person who brings a disgrace, who brings a bad name to the family, who, who damages the reputation of the family. Then you have the next one, a dash list. So a list of defaulters. Now this sometimes we hear it when people do not attend a school or college on a regular basis. They are absent a lot. Then the name comes up on the blacklist. Isn't it? Next one, a dash belt. So an area of fields, woods. And when you talk about fields, what color comes to your mind? When you talk about forest, what color comes to your mind? Yes, the color green. So you call it as a green belt. A green belt is an area where there are lots of fields and there are lots of woods. Okay, woods means forest. The next one. To have dash fingers. Now look at the description. Someone who is good at gardening. So if I am good at gardening, it means I am good at plants. I am good with plants. The moment I work with plants, the plants grow well. So that is called as being good with gardening. So what kind of fingers would I have if I am good at gardening? I will have green fingers. Alright. The next one. Be dash with envy. When you are very jealous about someone. What do you do? You become green with envy. It doesn't actually happen. Okay. A person who is a good gardener has got ordinary fingers like we have. The same color fingers that we have. But we call it as green fingers. We call it as going green with envy. No one actually changes color. These are all idioms. Give someone the dash signal. So when you give permission to do something. When you are in traffic and suddenly you get permission to move ahead. What is the color of the signal? It is green. So to give someone the green signal. A bolt from the dash. A sudden shock or a sudden surprise is called as a bolt from the blue. Okay. Out of the suddenly when something happens, something unexpected happens, what do you say? Out of the blue he came to see me. So suddenly he came to see me. It was very unexpected. Once in a blue moon again means very rarely. Alright. 
once in a blue moon. So all these words, when whenever there is a word blue, it has got something to do with uh, rarely, unexpectedly, suddenly, surprisingly, etc. Let's go to the next one. Vanish into the dash. So you leave without a trace. Someone who just becomes gayab, you can say in Hindi. So vanish into the blue again. Now we go to the next one. Dash blood. So someone who's from a royal family. Someone who's from a family of kings and queens and princesses. Okay. So who are these people? They are called as blue blood. So you see the word blue is used a lot for phrases in English language or from idioms in English language. Next one is dash-eyed boy. Someone who is your favorite person is again a blue-eyed boy. That person might have black eyes or brown eyes or green eyes. But you call him as a blue-eyed boy if he is your favorite person. Catch someone dash-handed. Catch someone in the act of doing something wrong. Like for example, you are traveling on the train without a valid ticket and the TC catches hold of you and charges you a fine. It is said that someone has caught you red-handed. Means someone has caught you when you were in the act of doing something which is not correct. Roll out the dash carpet, red carpet. When you give someone a royal welcome and someone is a VIP, a very important person, and you want to welcome that person, you roll out the red carpet. Now the next one is a dash herring. So something that diverts attention from the main issue. So that is a red herring. Something which is not very important, but you want to make it seem that it is very important. So that is a red herring. And last one is when you become very angry. What color do you see? You see red. Okay. So this is the first exercise from this lesson where we talked about a lot of colors because the lesson is about reading works of art. So there are a lot of colors in the lesson and therefore this exercise also had a lot of colors in it. Now let us move on and let us do the lesson. Now let us look at what are the main points as far as the contents of this lesson is concerned. So in the first part of the lesson leading works of art, we are going to talk about Sayyid Haider Raza. Now like in the beginning I told you who was this person? He was a painter and an artist who was an Indian. He was especially known for depicting geometrical shapes. Okay, so in none of his figures you will see human uh, be human beings or figures of human beings or uh, figures uh, from the uh, scenes from the environment etc. His paintings were all of abstract style. So come on let's talk a little bit more about him. So he is popularly known as Raza and he was a renowned Indian artist. He was born <clears throat> in a small village in Madhya Pradesh. And he drew simple geometrical shapes where he used striking color combinations, captivating compositions and some of these characteristic features are called in colors blue and orange. So these were the basic shades that he used. He used the colors blue, various shades of blue and the color orange and various shades of orange. Okay. See, so you can see some of his pictures here. So the dominant colors are blue and orange. He was honored with all the three Padma Awards. So these are the awards which is, are given away by the government of India and they are supposed to be very prestigious awards. So he was honored with all the three Padma Awards. So he was a Padma Shri awardee, he was a Padma Bhushan awardee and also a Padma Vibhushan awardee. So the, all these three awards were given to him or he was honored with all the three Padma then this great artist, he passed away on the 23rd of July 2016. So very recently, hardly four years ago, we lost him. He was 94 years old. All right. So he did a lot of work in his field. And finally, he uh, got a lot of acclaim also. He got a lot of praise and recognition 
in the form of awards and he lived a long fruitful life he passed away at the age of 94 so this was about sayed raza okay now i will show you a few more of his paintings so these are some paintings from the textbook so there is he has for he through his paintings he has tried to study indian art he has tried to study the rich indian heritage and culture that we have and also he has tried to depict uh, the philosophy of life in india his pictures also uh, give us a lot of a peace and also life at the same time so when you keep looking at these pictures you feel and you realize that there is a very deep thought to it so these are all abstract pictures you cannot place a finger on them and you cannot say okay this picture might mean this this should be the meaning of this particular picture you cannot say it okay because these pictures are really very abstract so uh, you will have to study art in detail in order to understand why and how he must have drawn these pictures now this painter that uh, we are talking about raza sahab he started painting at the age of 12 so you can imagine how long he worked in this field that is from the age of 12 up to the ripe old age of 94 when he was still active okay he has painted and he has given contributed to this field of art he also has studied at very famous uh, places like the chitrakala mahavidyalay at nagpur and then he studied at the jj school of art in mumbai he also went abroad and he tried to study art in france also for a few years later on he settled in france and he married a person who was a french and like we already discussed he won all the three padma awards that is the padma bhushan the padma shri and the padma vibhushan so this is about this person raza let us look at some more pictures that he painted see so uh, if you look closely at this picture let us look at the first one you will see there is a circle in it and there are there are uh, four uh, you can say uh, squares all right these circles are all uh, drawn and arranged in a particular manner and his paintings express a lot of uh, uh, creativity and they could be some of his paintings people thought were very complicated uh, it do express it in words if you try to express these paintings in words they are very complicated because what will you say about them you can see certain shapes now when the artist drew this painting you do not know what was going on in his mind all right but he used a lot of uh, lines and he used a lot of uh, colors in order to express the deep thoughts that he had so these are all extraordinary compositions compositions were very very different from the other paintings that you might have seen you can also take a look at the paintings which are there in the textbook these two are not there you will not find them in the textbook but you will be able to see certain pictures in your textbook also where you have a beautiful picture of uh, raza sahab drawing something okay with in circles so if it is on page number if you have come to page number 62 you will be able to see a picture of uh, sayed raza um, creating a painting where there are a lot of circles which are concentric one circle inside the other so this was about sayed haider raza so along with uh, seeing the lesson you can also read the lesson at the same time all right so you will get better idea or better insight into what sayed haider raza wanted to depict through his paintings he also said that my work is my own inner experience an involvement with a mystery of nature and form which is expressed in color light line space and light so this is what he wanted to say about his own paintings he said it is my own inner expression so i have tried to express what i feel inside of me okay so this was the first part of the lesson this lesson is divided into two parts like i told you the first part of reading works of art was about this very famous painter sayed haider raza and his paintings now moving on let's come to part 2 of the lesson where we will talk about the gond art so what is gond art about so gond art is a tribal form of an art 
Okay. Now, when you say tribal, it means it has been developed and preserved by the Gond tribal people. So, there are different kind of, uh, you can say tribes, there are different kind of communities of people. So, around Maharashtra and Mumbai, you will find a special community of people called as the Kolis or the fisher folk. Isn't it? In the same way, these are tribal people, they usually live in and around the forest area. So, these people, the Gond tribal people, you will see them in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, etc. And we have, uh, they have a rich tradition and culture. And when we try to understand their uh, culture, when we try to listen to stories about these people, we come to know that they have lived for thousands of years, even before the other people could come and reside in our country. Now, the Gond tribe, they use a particular language, which is very, very similar to the language uh, Telugu, which is spoken by the people of Andhra Pradesh and which is a Dravidian language. So, the Gond people, when you look at the states, when you say Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, these are all states in the central belt of India. So, you will not find them in the extreme south and you will not find them in the north part of India also. They are some. So, they are people who are spread mainly in the central part of India. Now, like I told you, there are people who live in the forest. So, come on, let's take a look at all their paintings. So, see, these are some paintings uh, drawn by the Gond people. So, what, will, what do you see commonly in all these paintings? So, the first painting, I can see a few birds. In the other one, I can see some fish. In the third one, I can see a creature, which I don't know, maybe it's a lion or it's some other kind of imaginary creature. So, basically, all these pictures depict animals, isn't it? When we say that they used to stay in the forest, they were tribal people, it means they were in close proximity to nature and they used to draw about nature. So, what was the canvas that they used to draw? Where was the place that they used to draw? They used to draw pictures on the earthen walls of their houses. So, they used their homes or the walls of their homes as a canvas in order to draw these beautiful pictures. You will see that the Gond art is a medium of recording and preserving whatever they used to see. Now children, in today's times, you will see that whenever we go to visit a place, whenever we see something interesting, whenever we see something new, immediately we pull out our mobile phones, we pull out our cameras and we try to uh, click pictures so that that memory is saved for us. Isn't it? What we have seen is uh, preserved forever in those uh, pictures or in those photographs. But in the ancient times, there was no such technology where you could record things. So people used to draw and they used to use different kind of natural products such as they used to use mud of different shades, they used to use the juice of plants, they used to use leaves from the tree bark of the trees, flowers, fruits and even things like coal and cow dung, charcoal, all these things were used by these people interestingly in order to draw. So just look at a close, just take a close look at this picture children where you can see birds, fish and uh, an animal which seems to be imaginary to me. So these animals, these paintings, just observe them carefully. They have so many colors in them in different shades. Alright, remember they were drawn at a time when there were no chemical colors available. So how did they draw? They made use of all these natural things. That is why it is very interesting and very enriching in order to see these natural tribal work. There is one more tribal work which we all know of and it is very close to home in Maharashtra. That is a Warli painting. So you must have seen how they use white color to paint on the brown walls and they paint stick figures on the brown walls. So, Varli paintings are also very important and very, very popular and we must have seen it. Okay? So, see how beautifully and how simply they have drawn these pictures. So, you will see that the pictures are very attractive and also the pictures are very lively. See the way they have drawn it, the kind of colors they have used. 
and the manner in which the pictures have been drawn just look at this picture it actually looks like there are two birds trying to peck at a particular stem so this was the way or the style in which they painted they used dots a lot so you can see a lot of dots here they use straight lines they used curved lines okay they used to make a uh, draw circles and various uh, shapes also which were curves so here you cannot see sharp lines you cannot see lines which are like in the form of a right angle or uh, lines which are a part of a rectangle so we can see all curvy lines over here dotted lines curvy lines and different shades of color so that is why these pictures look amazingly beautiful so the final effect is they look very beautiful see they have a uh, the both the birds have a, a stem in their beak and just look at how beautiful the stem is all right so there are many pictures in your book also i have tried to show you some pictures which are not there in your book so if you pick up your book and you open it you will see the picture of a squirrel and some beautiful peacocks the peacocks are drawn so differently that you have to look carefully and closely at them to know that they are peacocks see this is also a bird so there are two birds looking at many other birds which are flying above them so children this is all about the gond style of painting or the gond artwork all right so in this uh, part of the lesson we talked about the very famous uh, painter that is sayed raza and we also talked about the gond art now children there are some exercises which are uh, remaining but before that let us see a few more interesting pictures of gond art so what is this this is a man sitting on the tiger now we have all seen uh, pictures of durga mata sitting on the tiger so this must be some kind of god that they have worshiped all right uh, uh, people according to their different kind of faith according to the religion we all uh, tend to worship uh, different gods so if you are a hindu then uh, the this scene must be immediately uh, when when you see this you immediately think about uh, durga mata sitting on the lion but see this is a a male figure which is sitting on a lion so maybe they are used to worship some other kind of god all right so this also throws light on the kind of culture the kind of tradition that those people might have had so that is why when you try to read this when you try to study this what are we doing now we are trying to read we are trying to study the work of all these arts so when you look at gond art what have you studied what have you come to know about gond art what can you say after seeing this vasily video lesson or after looking at the textbook after reading the textbook what are the conclusions that you can arrive at that the gond people they were tribal people we already know it okay apart from that the life was so close to nature that most of their paintings they have shown animals in a good way you can never see uh, any picture in the gond uh, painting style where someone is showing an animal being hunted or an animal being killed that means they had a lot of reverence they had a lot of respect for nature for the plants for the animals for the birds which lived around them their life was totally dependent on these things and that is why you will see that they had a lot of respect they had a lot of love which they brought out in their work all right so today we talked about these two particular uh, a uh, type of uh, paintings that is one type of paintings based totally not on nature there was not a single human figure there and there was nothing to do with the environment that is the painting style of sayed haider raza and this is the second style of painting that we are looking at now which is the gond art totally based on nature totally based on animals plants birds etc so you see in one lesson we looked and we learned and we tried to read two entirely different kind of works of art but unfortunately children today's commercial world has driven many of these natural things into oblivion okay today you will see that many natural things which we were taken which people used to take for granted that is all these animals and birds and trees there will come a time very soon if we do not take care of our environment very soon we will have a situation where 
we will not be able to see all of this okay so in today's commercial age there are some people who have taken up gond art but they are not the tribals they have taken it up only as a way of earning money but the root is still there when when women used to clean the house and they used to make paintings in order to decorate their houses okay so in this part of the lesson children we have talked about the main part of the lesson that is the content of the lesson now we have a number of exercises as far as the english workshop part is concerned but this we will pick up when we meet next time so children now you have watched the video so after you watch the video now you will have to complete a few simple tasks now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones now after you watch the video what will you do you will please go to the description box which is given below the video so what is the description box see the description box looks like this all right and after you go to the description box you will see that there are a few questions there now what are these questions about these questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the google form so now what is the google form children it is nothing but a simple form there are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself so these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video so children wasn't that a very interesting lesson i'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson if you have liked this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which i keep posting regularly